Hello and welcome to this, the Outside Xbox Quiz of the Year 2020. Oh, well, M gosh. Well, Mike, it's been a year. It certainly has. Probably. It certainly has. Probably parts of it we'd like to forget. All of it. I've, ha I've had it all erased from my memory banks already. I simply won't rubbish. allow it though, Mike. <laughs> I simply will not allow it because I'm... I was looking forward to hitting the l tiny little reset button where nope. I just do a clean wipe. I simply won't allow it because I'm going to determine right now how well you do remember 2020. Okay. Yeah, I bet I remember loads of it. It, well, was, a, a, it was memorable, yeah. if nothing else. Pretty sure only two games came out this year, okay. Cyberpunk and presumably Formula One 2020. Well, Jane, we're about to find out as we roll okay. into round one. Twenty twenty was a big year for video game news, so let's see if you were paying attention. I'm going to read you a series of headlines from Eurogamer.net, and I want you to fill in the blank to complete the headline. All right. Do you understand the concept? Yes, I think it's the third or fourth year we've done it, and I'm just about grasping it now. So right. Okay, bit of a good, slow learner. Good. Blank visited an Animal Crossing player's island to sell turnips. Uh, Danny Trejo. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, I could see he it. He hasn't, he hasn't, okay, right, clearly it's not that because you're laughing, so no, I, I, mean, draw my, I would draw my Oh, was remark. that your guess? No, 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 if, no. if that's your guess, that's, I retract my Genuinely, laugh. Genuinely, uh, Danny Trejo had an Animal Crossing on, he was one of the various celebrities who okay. was doing Animal Crossing stuff. Ooh, I remember this one. Uh, well, actually, there's been a lot of Animal Crossing celebrity involvement, mm. but I believe this was uh, Elijah Wood, I think, put out a thing on Twitter saying I need some good turnip prices. I need and, that good, uh, good, and, that hookup. Yeah, I just opened it out to the world and um, there were loads of excitable Animal Crossing players taking screenshots of Frodo wandering around in their, mm. in their island. Elijah Wood. It was definitely Elijah Wood. I remember now. Okay. let's it's definitely my boy Elijah Wood. All right, let's see if you're correct. Frodo himself. Correct, Jane. The answer is Elijah Wood visited an Animal Crossing player's island to sell yeah. turnips. I mean, they had literally nothing to do either. So, you know, why not? Why yeah. not commit to building a really good Animal Crossing island and selling turnips? Did Mike get that? Mike did get that, yes. Oh, he was straight Sucks. in with that. Yeah, he knew it straight away. Um, Boo. So, yes, Elijah Wood visited a, um, a woman named Jessa's island to okay. sell turnips because uh, she had a particularly high turnip price. And he, he just hung out on the island. He complimented the place. And he if very... If had known, that's how to get a visit from... Get it. Elijah Wood and he just very, have a high turnip price. Very respectfully asked if he could pick some fruit as well, which is lovely. That's so. extremely, extremely yeah. sweet. So very on go. brand. Good job, Mr. Wood. All right. Your next Eurogamer headline, Mike, mm -hmm. is Amazon is making a blank TV series with the creators of Westworld. Oh. Um. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mm. Um, what could this be, I wonder? Literally anything. Literally Could any... it though? I mean, what games lend themselves to that kind of epic Westworld style TV series? You're not going to make All of them. that of like... Among Us, are you? You're not going to make no, obviously but, the Bobcat you know, series. Why... But the... It's going to be a video game based TV show. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a Last of Us one happening. I think there's a Resident Evil one coming to Netflix. Yes. I keep coming back to The Witcher, even though that's a, already a TV <laughs> series. <laughs> yeah, they're going to make their own separate Witcher TV series. Yeah, yeah we'll make our own rival one. Um, it's it's got to be a big RPG type thing, right? Open world. Um, it's Last of Us then. It's Last of Us. You're saying The Last of Us. All right. Unless it's The Last of Us anime. Okay, I, I don't know. Um, cyberpunk, I don't know. No idea. Hmm. The answer, if we reveal it here, is Fallout. Amazon is making a Fallout, Fallout TV series with the creators yeah. of Westworld. It's Westworld series creator Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan will oversee yeah. the project. And it's for of Amazon no, of Prime. What? Of Genuinely, Fallout. I've forgotten. Fallout, that was... <laughs> I said it like 10 seconds ago. My, my brain is like right. a, a very, it's a sieve, but like a sieve with very large holes in yeah. it. Just <laughs> one giant yeah. hole just in this the, sieve. Yeah, the yeah. hole is full. Elijah Wood is plugging up the hole. <laughs> That's it. It's a sieve that only, that sieves for everything except, except no, <laughs> that sieves only for Elijah Wood. Elijah Wood and the last Everything else has gone from my mind. Yeah, I think they'll do, they'll do a good job, won't they? Um, bit of, uh, unless the entire world's tired of, the apocalypse now like maybe <laughs> post-apocalypse is just not the not the vibe yeah. after 2020 someone just make a um, happy tv show that we could all enjoy that'd be nice wouldn't it why don't they make animal crossing into a tv show that it could star elijah wood it'd yeah be brilliant. it could have hour-long episodes where very little happens someone just waters yeah, some flowers exactly, yeah 
get buy some new trousers. It'd be some, great. Some trees get shaken. Yeah. Oh, it man. It sounds like the dream. Get on that, <laughs> Westworld creators. Okay, next headline, Jane. Boy in the striped pyjamas writer accidentally includes blank recipe in new novel. I know this one. Yeah. This is brilliant. All right, explain um, to me the new story. Oh, it was a, a, a Breath of the Wild recipe. So, uh, obviously, when you're writing a novel... I assume you're not an expert in every single thing that you um, that you're writing about. So you do a bit of research, right? You do a bit of Googling. Um, and uh, this chap was writing a book and I think it was something like red dye. He wanted a recipe for red dye or something like that or the name of a red dye. Mm-hmm. He did some Googling and he came across, I believe, uh, Legend of Zelda... Um, might have been Breath of the Wild, might have been a previous game, but a Legend of Zelda recipe that in- included a fi- fictitious insect or plant, and he included that in his like very serious recipe for red dye in his very serious novel. Correct, Jane. The answer is Boy in the Striped Pajamas writer accidentally includes Zelda recipe in new novel. This uh, is It was very cute. Yeah. yeah. Irish author John Boyne, uh, in his latest book, A Traveller at the Gates of Wisdom, uh, yes. included the following phrase when talking about someone dyeing their clothes. <laughs> That was uh, it. It was a dye. But it I'm, had mushrooms and stuff mm, in it. Yeah, I employed yeah. spicy pepper, the tale of the red Lizalfos, and four Hylian shrooms. <laughs> which... Hylian shrooms? If you yeah. don't know about shrooms, that might be a real shroom. Who's got time to check? Um, but yeah, I think they were, uh, the, the writer was quite quite sweet and self-effacing about it. Yeah. I think they, they owned up to it. He just went on Google, it. searched red how do I recipe. make red dye, <laughs> and the first result was a... Um, you can't have even click through the, to the, the Google thing. It must be one of those things where Google just presents you with like a pressy at it's the like, top. He's like, yeah, that looks about right. Yeah, that, that's, that's probably right. Yeah, Indian that's um, <laughs> Irish author John Boyne there. Yep. Who, uh, he uh, copped to the mistake and said he'd be leaving it at all future editions of the book because it was funny. All right, next headline. Blank is now the most downloaded PlayStation Plus game ever. Uh, must be Fall Guys, right? Mm. Like a game that was so new and good that everyone who had PlayStation Plus went and got it immediately and people who didn't have PlayStation Plus went and got PlayStation Plus it was that good must be four guys that was the big PlayStation Plus uh, release of the year yeah last bus one I don't know okay well Jane I can tell you that the answer is yeah. Fall yeah. Guys is now the most downloaded PlayStation oh, Plus game ever of course it is bloody hell of course it's of course it's bloody Fall Guys mm-hmm. they did also at this at this point probably more now had sold seven million copies on Steam, so they're doing okay. I think they're, they're doing, doing okay. okay. So don't don't need to worry there. That's another point for Just you, Mike. Just the one well mansion in Beverly Hills for those guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, next headline: Blank streamed Among Us on Twitch, and four hundred thousand people tuned in. Well, that's obviously AOC, isn't it? Uh, this will be probably AOC, um, Alexandra Ocasio Cortez who is a uh, US politician, a very exciting voice in US politics, and also a gamer. Um, and uh, yeah, she, she's dabbled in some Among Us streaming, and it wouldn't surprise me if she managed to get some mad numbers, some big numbers, um, uh, streaming Among Us on Twitch. Correct, Jane. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, otherwise known as AOC, streamed Among Us on Twitch, and 400,000 people tuned in. So this is uh, Representative Alexandria, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, one of the few politicians who actually understand video games and Twitch, according to this Eurogamer article. And um, according to this, uh, the stream peaked at 439,000 viewers, meaning it Dang. ranks within the top 20 biggest streams of all time for concurrent Dang. viewers. Amazing. That is, that, that is big, big numbers. First I ever stream. I dream of those numbers. Smash the top 20. So. Yeah. Very good. Anyway, right. she, she's great. She seems really cool. So, Okay, I think you'll, you'll enjoy this next headline, uh, good. Mike. The next headline is, the main protagonist of Final Fantasy 16 is called blank. Oh, okay, I remember this. It is a name that we would find quite ordinary, mm-hmm. perhaps, in the UK. Uh, but I'm trying to remember what it was. Probably like Derek or Colin or Clive or... Oh, it's Clive. I'm pretty sure it's Clive. And that is absolutely hilarious. I suspect this is one of the, and I'm, you know, it's exact, I'm sure it's exactly the same in the other direction. But this is, I suspect, one of those situations where to the Japanese ear, uh, Clive sounds exciting mm. and exotic and, you know, kind of 
maybe a little bit not a not a name that a lot of people currently have so maybe it's got a bit of you know age to it feels a bit kind of you know historical maybe but for me my driving instructor was called Clive <laughs> and um, that's uh, that's all I can think of whenever I see that the uh, the character in Final Fantasy 16 is called hmm. Clive I was recently writing <laughs> about the um, uh, the Japanese game Nano Breaker and the yes. main the main hero in it is called Jake and the main villain is called Keith which is <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, they're both like these... nano machine in, enabled like cyborg yeah. warriors with Jake Sephiroth haircuts, but they're called Jake and Keith. <laughs> I think was it Clive. I feel like it was Clive. Yeah, you're correct. The main f- protagonist of Final Fantasy 16 is called Clive. Clive Rosfield, to give him his full name. Okay, uh, is yeah. the young knight and the tattooed man in the Final Fantasy 16 Awakening trailer. Sick. All right. So there you go, Clive Rosfield. Yeah, Clive. That's who we'll be playing as in Final so Fantasy Clive, 16. Yeah. Exciting. And thank you. Finally, this is going okay. Actually. It's going all right for you. You're doing. I've, yeah, mm. I didn't. I wanted you know to go easy on you guys this year because <laughs> yeah, it's been a, it's, it's been, been a hard year. Yeah. yeah. All right. Finally. Notorious Half-Life 2 achievement recalled as Gabe Newell blanks. What happened to Gabe Newell in 2020? <laughs> I'm like, this is where I'm like, oh my God, did something really terrible happen? I'm, I'm sure it's not that. Uh, is it to do... The, the only Half-Life 2 achievement I can think of that is properly notorious is the one about someone getting clattered in the head with a toilet. <laughs> so did Gabe Newell... Slip and bang his head in the bathroom or something this year. And <laughs> is it, 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 Gabe Newell brains himself on toilet. Yeah, not, Gabe Newell brains himself on toilet, re- recalling, recalling notorious legendary Half Life 2, Half-Life achievement. Two achievement. The gnome one? And what happened to the gnome? The, 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 you carry it, you carry it around. I don't remember, honestly, no idea. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. The answer is actually notorious Half-Life 2 achievement recalled as Gabe Newell fires Garden Gnome into space. What? So... <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I, I'd like to take issue with that, Eurogamer.net, because it wasn't a Half-Life 2 achievement. It was a Half-Life 2 episode 2 <laughs> achievement. So you need yeah, to be I mean... more specific, Eurogamer. Ah. So Half-Life 2 Episode 2's Little Rocket Man achievement um, yeah. is poised to become a reality as Valve's Gabe Newell prepares to launch a Garden Gnome into space for charity. So this Aww. is um, this is a collaboration uh, between uh, Newell, design and manufacturing company Weta Workshop, who built the Gnome out of titanium, and Rocket Lab, who launched the Gnome into space as part of its rideshare mission Flight 16. Uh, and the idea was to raise money for a paediatric intensive care unit of a children's hospital in Auckland, New Zealand. You know, like space junk is becoming an increasingly uh, serious issue. Mm. Um, and I feel like Gabe Newell is just contributing to that at the moment. So I think he should well, be Well, it's, it's And I'm charity. not just salty because I didn't get the point. All it's, right. it's raise money, Mike, for the paediatric <laughs> intensive care unit of Children's Hospital Starship in Auckland, New Zealand. So maybe take back your horrible things. Children's you Hospital Starship? Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's called spaceship. Starship Children's Hospital. <laughs> right, okay, fair enough. Anyway. That's cool. That's a cool name for a children's hospital. Fine. I'll allow it. The uh, launch event was streamed on YouTube. Did it burn up on re-entry? Um, it's, no, it's in it's in space. Oh, it is in the, space. Oh, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking at footage it's now. It's in the region, of, the ge- region generally known as space. Um, it's mounted on the outside of the, <laughs> of the rocket. And it's just, okay. in, yeah, it's just okay. in space. So it's wherever that rocket is. Yeah. So, so someone knows where it is. That's good. It's out That's there beyond good. the furthest reaches. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, like a probe, like the Voyager yeah, probe. It's exactly. just like going out to spread the good word about gnomes. So, th- good news. All right, um, let me tally up your scores here. Let's have what a did look. I get? So that's five of a possible seven, Mike. Uh, Not bad. Pretty, pretty impressive. I'll take it. Out of the I'll game. I'll take it. Just getting warmed up. So you got four out of, of a possible seven there, Jane. Yeah. So not bad. Pretty good score there, I would say. What did Mike get? Mike got five. Oh, no. So you got one more nice. than you. He was, um, he got the Fall Guys one correct. Of course. So. I'm kicking myself over that one. But otherwise... That one I, sh- I should have gotten, Fall Guys. Otherwise, it was, it was head but to head. Before this quiz, Andy was like, maybe you all want to reacquaint yourselves with some of the things that happened in 2020. I was like, like, nah. It's not that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's the longest, simultaneously the longest and shortest year of all time. So. Yeah. All right. Well, Jane, it's time to make up the points in round two. Mike, one trend that has gained popularity in 2020 is angry gamers review bombing games they don't like. 
To balance it out, because we're all about positivity here at Outside Xbox, yes. we've gone to Metacritic to look at some of the positive user reviews posted this year. In this round, yeah. I'll read you an excerpt from a Metacritic review, and I want you to tell me what game it's for. Okay. Question one. Imagine if those leaks never happened. Players would just concentrate on the whole story without specifying certain moments. No one would play the game with leaked scenes in mind. Just try to perceive the story as a chunk, not in pieces. Maybe then you will understand. <laughs> I mean, you say it's positive, but that sounds like vaguely threatening. To yeah, honest. a little bit. Oh, I mean, it's Metacritic. Right? Um, Last of Us Two. Uh, I think the it would have to be the sort of game that would uh, people would be emotionally invested in enough that uh, to be to be angry about leaks and things. And so I feel like probably this has got to be Final Fantasy VII remake. I reckon. Okay, let's see if you're right. And there were leaks of that, so. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. It was The Last of Us 2. Oh, dang. Was okay, the answer. fair enough. Another, another game people care deeply about. I mean, yeah, that was the most high-profile uh, leak story stuff of the year. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well done. Very well identified. Question two. Yes. Better than expected. People crying that game have some bugs. First you cried to release game ASAP and now write naught of ten reviews. Pathetic. <laughs> Again, somewhat positive. Like... Positive about the game, but not necessarily like contributing positively to the debate. Um, <laughs> Better than expected. See, I was going to say cyberpunk, except everyone expected cyberpunk to be like the second coming anyway. So I don't, I don't think it was like a, a sort of flying low on the radar underdog little game that could. First you Obviously. cried to release game ASAP and now write naught out of 10 reviews. Well, all games are, you know, I cry to release ASAP all games. <laughs> Literally every game. So I, I don't think that that helps me distinguish which game. Uh, I assume this is Cyberpunk. I mean, it's been, like, notoriously buggy. It's got to be Cyberpunk, surely. I don't know. I'm going to go Cyberpunk. I could be here all day. Correct. It is a review hey. of Cyberpunk 2077. So seize the day. And set it on fire. Cyberpunk 2077. Okay, so when they say better than expected, it's because they had read all the Naught Out of 10 reviews and gone, mm. well, this actually, isn't going to run on anything. Actually, it's okay. All right. Actually, it's okay. Okay, next Metacritic review. Mike, are you ready? I am. Yeah, I couldn't be more ready. Okay. Well, I've just completed the campaign mode for blank. And as I sit here with a shot of whiskey in my hand, panting heavily from the past two hours of white knuckle edge of your seat, vicious, action-packed carnage, all I can say is, holy hell. What a journey <laughs> it was. I have to give the developers major props for creating this masterpiece. And you say this person was drinking a whiskey at the same time. They sat there with a shot of whiskey in their white knuckle hand. Do they want my number? Because that's so <laughs> Um, so what I, clues can you glean from this? Well, the main clue is that there is a game with a significant multiplayer mode um, because he's talking about campaign mode rather than just the story. So I suspect, and I've not played it, and maybe it is brilliant, maybe it is a work of art, but I suspect this is Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Holy hell. What were the religious shooters of this year, Andy? Tell me that. <laughs> the, what were the most religious shooters? That was uh, Christ of Duty. That was a good one. <laughs> that came out. Uh, Hell. Hmm. Oh wait, of course it's um it's only blooming Doom, isn't it? It's uh, Doom Doom Two, the Return of Doom, <laughs> Electric Boogaloo, Electric Boogaloo. Do you uh, remember the name of Doom. the Doom game that came out this year? Andy, I remember so little of this year. Okay, no, it'll come to me, but you're just gonna have to sit there and wait while my brain. Okay, well it like while it spins up. Point eight K modem. <laughs> <laughs> so <it's just> <laughs> Eternal. Yes, Eternal. yes, you got there. You did it. Now, uh, you know, the, the circuitous route I had to go Tell down, me. Tell the me path about it. I had to bimble down to get to the answer was that we were back in 2019. See, all my good memories are just like lodged in 2019, so I have to rewind <laughs> right. more than 12 months yep. to get to memories, to access memories from that period in time. And we were calling it Doom Maternal for Doom a while. Doom we Maternal, we yes, Doom of course. Maternal. And from that, I had to had to scry that it was doom eternal well you got the point so let's move on to the next question uh okay. the next metacritic review even yes which is absolutely the best game i've ever played presence is real and continuous 
you combat blanks thinking you are fighting real people, it's a must try. Presence, it's gotta be a VR game. It's Half-Life Alex. It's gotta be Half-Life Alex because uh, yeah, they're talking about the the sort of the reality of it. A couple of big VR games released this year. One bigger than the other, I think. But uh, there's The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, which was quite popular. And if the blank is zombies, it might be that. But I suspect that it's probably Half-Life Alex, because that is the best VR game that has been released this year, or indeed any year, probably. It's very, very good. Uh, yeah, so correct. Like combine or something. Yeah, com oh, combine is indeed the blank yes. that was missing. That's it's it. you fight combine, thinking you're fighting real people. Well done. It's good Half Life, Alex. I've not finished it yet because I have to stop playing it every so often because it's so intense and scary. <laughs> it's really, that. really. When you're there, surrounded by headcrab zombies and headcrabs and things in the dark, it's horrible. Do you have it's to sit really... and pant heavily with a glass of whiskey in your hand? All right, next one. I can guarantee many of these negative reviews are simply bandwagoners or haven't even played the game. While the game is short, what is there is amazing. I'd rather play a great five hour game to a less stellar 30 hour game. What are the games that are short? this year. Okay, so there's a five hour game that took some flack for being a five hour game. Hmm. Now, it, it suggests that this doesn't have a multiplayer mode of any sort, because otherwise, like, you might have something else to do after you finish the campaign. Mm. Um, so it's got to be a story based single player game. I'm looking around as if I'm, my eyes are going to a light upon a box copy of whatever this game is. <laughs> Just propped up on your desk. Yeah, that would be nice. I don't think Assassin's Creed's particularly short. I think that game's massive, apparently. It's not five um, hours, certainly. Yeah, it's certainly more than five hours. No, not sure. No, I, 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 I would only be guessing, and I, I can't think of anything. Okay, well, Sorry. Mike, I can tell you the answer is Resident Evil 3. dragged for being short. It was dragged for being short. It was quite short. And it was short, yeah. But to be fair, it was also really good. Did you write that review? I that no, yes, that is me. I got on Metacritic straight after. I knew it. That's why I had you read it again. Yeah. That's why when I <laughs> went into the it mind like of the Andy. writer, yeah. I was like, oh, look at these hands. These I, are Andy's. I put down yeah. my tumbler of whiskey and then I typed away. <laughs> no, that wasn't yeah. you. That was Mike. All right, finally, final review. This game is not for scrubs. It isn't a camp fest that allows you to camp in windows or high platform vantage points everywhere for free kills, and that's why it's getting such low scores. Wow. Um, well, this is going to be a game that leads on multiplayer. Um, Something that will not stand for you camping bastards. No, not interested. <laughs> no cheap kills from high vantage points. Yeah. So it's all very flat set in a very flat place like the Netherlands. <laughs> Let's just go gut instinct and say Call of Duty Cold War. Maybe it's Cold War. Is it Cold War? It is Call of Duty Black Ops Hooray! Cold War. Well done. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now I know that about Cold War not to go camping in it. Yeah. It's just it isn't a camp fest and that's too why cold everyone hates it. For camping. Yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> the ground's too Don't cold to lie on yeah. so you can't camp. Yeah. And now, like, all the hardcore players are complaining about it, as they always do. So, you know, the cycle continues. <laughs> all right, let's see how you did in this round. Well, it's a very impressive um, Metacritic review round there, Jane. You got five out of six correct. Oh, wow. Are you secretly, yeah, really. are you secretly writing Metacritic reviews in your spare time? It's all me. It's just... It's one million Jane Sock Puppet accounts. Yeah. Missed some sitters. Missed some absolute sitters in that round. Yeah, so Mike, you got three out of six for that round. So, you know, half points. How Rubbish. do you feel? How are you feeling about that? Gutted. Eviscerated. All right, let's move on to the next round, the picture round. So one trend we've seen a lot in uh, 2020 is HD remakes or remasters of old games. There have been loads of them this year. Almost too many to count, although you can actually count them. It is a real number. And Andy has counted them. Mm. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a screenshot of an old game that got a remake or a remaster this year. And I want you to tell me what game it is. Could not okay. be simpler. So if okay. you would like to look at picture number one and tell me... I am gonna... What game is this? Oh my gosh. What? I mean, that's that's a pre-rendered background right there. Uh, 
as a PS1 era game, I would say. Now Why I, I is have that deliberately man? chosen slightly misrepresentative or misleading pictures, just so it's not oh, obvious. Thanks. Cheers. But um, I think there's. You're enough... in like a warehouse with a bunch of barrels enough and a man beans. in a shirt and a belt. That could be anything. It doesn't have a, a really distinctive art style. We know that Resident Evil 3 was remade. Is that a character from Resident Evil 3? Maybe it is Resident Evil 3 and it's just like a really un-Resident Evil 3 looking still. The hand does look like a sort of hand from that era. Is it? Is it Resident Evil 3? It is Resident Evil 3, correct. Hey, Who is that man? I'd rather starve to death in here than be eaten by one of those undead monsters! That's the guy at the start who locks himself in the truck. He made a hero for our times. Yeah, he made it into the uh, he made it into the remake. He's wow, a popular character who has lasted throughout the years. <laughs> Great. All right, good. Let's bring up picture of remake number two. This is hmm, okay. Ah, that is a Tony Hawk's Pro Skate. Did it really look that bad? <laughs> Andy, did it really used to look that bad? Not in, not in my memory, Mike. It's a man swimming in a canal. <laughs> Uh, it was before we could re- render water. From a time before we could render water. No, it's Tony Hawk, isn't it? It's Tony Hawk. <laughs> oh man, you had me going there. Uh, it is. <laughs> it is Tony Hawk's pro skater. It's a half pipe, and the, the mm-hmm. skate, the skateboard has gone. Vroom, yep. Off in the other direction. It is quite hard to find a screenshot of well, that. He's got one of those where you can't see a skateboard. Like woman. Yeah. Invisible. Yeah. But there we go. Uh, that's Tony Hawk's pro skater one, which Hooray! was remastered this year as Tony Hawk's pro skater one and two HD, which was very yeah, good. Yeah. Turpus. Turpus. We say. One of my favourite games of the year. All right. If you would like to open. In the picture number three and tell me what I'm game this is. It. I'm looking at it. All right, it's a, a pretty beaten up kids' playground, so that says to me, ooh, dystopia. That is easy, my friend. That is Final Fantasy VII. Uh, that is the little playground near Sector Seven slums or whatever it is, uh, where you have a heart to heart with Aerith. Ooh, look at what we've lost. <laughs> Ooh, look at how hard life is now. And it's probably from some of the raggedier bits of of uh, the city in Final Fantasy VII. Would you care to explain to me what the hell this cat thing is? It's a children's playground. It's an adorable children's playground with a slide where you come out, you go into the cat's ear, or, or sort of a cavity below its ear, and next to its weird vestigial arm, mm. and then you slide out of its tongue, I assume, and <laughs> it loves it. That's Look what how you happy it is. Deviants were into in the late nineties, yeah, is it? Exactly. Yeah. Sickening. Uh, I mean, it's not a good playground by any stretch of the imagination, but it's uh, it is a playground. Hmm. All right. Fine. Yes. Correct. It is Final <laughs> Fantasy VII, which was remade this year, but only part one of the remake yes, came out this year. Only half of it. They're going to be parceling it out. And drip feeding it to you, and you'll Fine, just so you'll just good, take, take it. it. You'll yeah. you'll love it because they know you'll just. I sit absolutely there and take will. It. Yeah. yeah, I'm right. an absolute mark. I can't believe that was this year. Couldn't Feels fit like it all. A million in. years yep. ago. <laughs> but it was, in fact, this year. Oh boy. Okay, good. All right, next remake, number four. Oh jeez, what is this? Mm, what is this? I'm getting sort of maybe kind of vintage Americana vibes, although it's hard to tell. There's not a lot of detail. It sort of looks PS2 era, I would say, rather than PS1 era. It's got them them textures mm-hmm. all over it. Um, Thinking sci-fi, because it's, it's... Oh, wait. Um, from her clothes, it might actually be set not in an ironic Americana retro-futurism-like fallout, but actually set at the time indicated by her clothes, which is, you know, maybe, I don't know, 50s or 60s or something. She does not ring any bells. No, I've no idea. Sorry, no idea. Hello, Mrs. Neighbor. I've come to begin a ju- hero's journey. What say you? She's not saying anything to me. She's I not don't saying, know. right. I don't know what She's it is. not helping. What is it? Uh, it's destroy all humans. Ah, uh, of course. You're along, Americana. definitely along the right lines with the sci-fi, the 50s Americana. 50s, 60s. Yeah. That is unlike anything I, I remember of that game. So, for a good good work, I suppose. Yeah, tricked you. Screenshot number five. What game number is this? Number five. Oh, this is pretty. Look at that. It reminds me of the start of World of Warcraft, but that's not Stormwind. Oh, no. Ah, that is Dark Souls. That's Anor Londo, right? Dark Souls? Is that your answer? 
Sorry, Demon Souls, even. Demon Souls, interesting. Uh, this establishing shot goes up the tower and in through a window. And then we're looking at our protagonist, who is... Claire Redfield. It's Resident Evil 3. <laughs> Claire Redfield Jill famously Valentine. not appearing in Resident Evil 3. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Jane, I can tell you it's actually... I have no idea. It's Warcraft 3. Which what? received a remake this year in the form of Warcraft 3 Reforged. Get off, really? Yep. That does look like Animal Londo. Look, it's the Duke's archives up on the left and um, Sorry, you know, it's the Warcraft church 3. down to the like, maybe they just stole Anor Londo entirely <laughs> from Oh my god, this blows my mind. Demon Souls did, god, get a, did get a remaster this year, it's a good guess. So what city is that? What city is that meant to be? I don't know, I don't know Warcraft. Uh, Alright, hang on, I'm gonna look it up. My sources tell me, Andy, I've consulted my sources and they tell me that's actually Lordaeron. So Lordaeron. I feel Okay, yes, do you feel vindicated? The city of Lordaeron. No, oh, I feel no. like a right. jump. Okay. I feel like I'm a sorry. prime idiot. I'm sorry to hear that. A real champion fool well, here, Andy. Someone needs to look into the fact that that is exactly Anor Londo. <laughs> someone needs to pull them up on this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Find a sc- in this edit, Andy, which I, I think you're in charge of. Um, find a screenshot of Anor Londo, and it's got a cutscene that looks exactly like that. All right, fine. You're not getting any extra points, though. Well, we wait, wait until it works its way through the courts, and then we'll see whether I deserve points or not. All right, load give it up. five years. Picture give me a bonus number, point. Picture number six. Okay. All right. I'm looking at it. This should be easy. It. This is SpongeBob. So it's a game that has like a fish newscaster in it. That can't be very many games. <laughs> Do you uh, know the name of the game? Battle for Bikini Bottom or something. Okay. Let's see if you're right. Bikini Bottom residents have been attacked by a raging torrent of robot horror. So much for fixing this quietly. <laughs> yes, Mike, correct. It is SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated is the name Rehydrated, of the yes. uh, of the HD remaster. Is that really this year? The HD uh, remake. You know what? I I just recognise the font basically. I recognise the SpongeBob font. I, I think thought that maybe I was being too generous giving you the font, but you know what? It's been a tough year. Oh, okay. That should have been obvious because it had a fish. Came out on the 23rd of June, 2020, there using Unreal Engine 4. For wow, SpongeBob. really necessary, yeah. I would say, uh, <laughs> for, to to really render SpongeBob in his true glory. All right, not um, bad, Mike. You got four out of six for that round. Yeah, missed a couple of big ones, though, I suppose. Yeah. Well, I would never have gotten Warcraft, and I don't think I would, ever would have gotten Destroy All Humans, so I can't feel too bad about that. Okay, Jane, you got three out of six in the uh, the remakes round, which is a solid solid middle of the table result, I would say. Mm-hmm. How, how are you mm-hmm. feeling? Shaken. Shaken. That was not a great showing from me here. To your on core. On the screenshot, screenshot round. Yeah, yeah, the screenshot round. You well. Like me. <laughs> Let's see how you I'm glad do. Glad you're here, viewers, to see my brain disintegrate here at the end of all things. Well, it's all in right. December 2020. Because the next round is my favourite round. It's the music round. Oh no. Music, it's the best. But have you been paying attention to the musical stylings of this year's games, Mike? No. Nope. Well, nope. bad luck. as usual, I play it on mute. What? <laughs> I'm going to play you some snippets of game music released this year, and I want you to tell me what game they're from. Okay. Hooray. Other headphones in. So, Mike, if you would like to listen to clip number one. Okay. It's very cheery. I like it. It sounds familiar, actually. Uh, I haven't played it, but um, I know Luke was saying that the Paradise Killer soundtrack is really good and it's kind of a sort of synthy, you know, funky synthy holiday kind of vibe, and that's what I'm getting from this game. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Paradise Killer because I don't have any better ideas. Okay. This gives me Fall Guys vibe, isn't it? Fall Guys. Fall Guys. Fall Guys. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jane. The answer is Mortal Kombat 11. Sub-Zero wins. 
That is what? the friendship theme from the oh, Aftermath of DLC. It bloody is, yes. Remember the new friendships they added? They've all got yeah. that fun party music that plays when oh, they uh, when they do their cool friendships. You tricked me. What happened to being nice this year, Andy? <laughs> I thought what you would get nice? that. I thought it was really <laughs> obvious. <laughs> I've not played enough Mortal Kombat, clearly. Oh man, um, I'm doing. But I do remember now. Center. I remember your your excellent video about um, friendships and finishing moves mm. and stuff. Um, yeah, I d yeah I do know that now. Dang. Okay, fine. All right. Bit of music. The second, Mike. Please listen yep. to it now. I mean, it's pretty heavy. It's probably going to be Doom, isn't it? Okay. I mean, it feels very Doom Eternal to me. What makes you say that? Well, it's kind of urgent metal, industrial metal sort of music. Um, Could you describe it with a glass of whiskey in hand? Yeah, I, yeah, I would, yeah. yeah. Um, and if I were to describe it in a noise, it would be... Correct. That cool. is music from Doom Eternal. There we go. Could it be any other game? No, I don't think so. No. I think that's pretty much the only game that could be from. <laughs> or Mortal Kombat, maybe. All right. <laughs> that's the point. So let's move on to music piece the third. Okay. Kind of spacey. Okay. It's energetic. Energetic electro, probably sci-fi. Feels kind of like cyberpunky, but I don't think it is cyberpunk because I think the music in cyberpunk is actually like really interesting, and like this feels a bit more. This feels a bit more like video game music than than the stuff in cyberpunk. I'm trying to bring to mind what the music in cyberpunk is like, but it's nothing. Nothing's nothing's coming to mind. I hear nothing. I hear just Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Uh, Wake up, Samurai. Yeah, um, that's it. That's all I can hear. Okay, it is not, I'm afraid. It is Yakuza Like a Dragon. <laughs> and it's the battle oh. theme from Yakuza. But interestingly, Mike took almost the exact same mental route as you did to end because up it's, yeah. being incorrect also. Bit of music, the fourth. Mm -hmm. Let's listen. got to be four guys i'm thinking cutesy arcade game type thing is this four guys it's got yeah little squeaky squelchy stuff in it is it is it fall guys it is fall guys yeah Yay! correct what right, what good. about it said fall guys to you it's cheery and upbeat and that that was the only cheery upbeat game. <laughs> no wait that was animal crossing animal crossing was the thing yeah but it's more energetic than anything Animal Crossing has to offer. You you sort of, uh, you, you paused for a moment dramatically, like you're hosting Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or something, and um, I thought <laughs> I got it wrong, so good work, I suppose. No, no, it's good, good ear. You definitely identified the uh, the tone of the game, yes. certainly, from the music. So that was good. Well done. All right, bit of music number five. It's acoustic guitars, it's misery. Ah, oh, this is nice. The only game I can think of that has an acoustic guitar in it this year is Last of Us Part 2. But I've not played it. And it is it really this basic? This is got this is Animal Crossing for sure. Having said Animal Crossing, this is I couldn't tell you what time of day it is. But it says a lazy sun summer afternoon to me in Animal Crossing. Okay. Yeah, why not? Let's go for it. Let's guess. Let's guess and say okay. Last of Us 2. <laughs> wow. I mean, you couldn't be more wrong, Mike. This is Animal Crossing New Horizons. <laughs> All right. Yeah, beta, more basic. It's like <laughs> The Last of Us 2, but more basic. I'm interested that you I've got sadness that. from this. It's the 2 a.m. theme from Animal Crossing New Horizons. Yeah, so everyone's, it's just like, everyone's happy at 2 a.m. Nothing good happens after 2 a.m. 2 a.m.? I, well, I, I, I had to pick one that you wouldn't be immediately familiar with. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're and right. I know you're I not know know playing Animal Crossing like... at 2 a.m. Um, Do they change the music on the hour every hour? Mm -hmm. So that means there's a 3 a.m. theme. Oh, yeah. The 3 a.m. theme is a bit kind of weird and stealthy. Yeah, because it's like, it's you quiet. should be in bed. Yeah. It's 3 a.m. It should just be a, a high-pitched tone that <laughs> just doesn't stop until you turn it off and go to bed. Finally, we have piece of music number six. Mike, tell me what this is. It 
it sounds like sort of stage clear music. You know, like, well done. You finished this stage. Uh, it's got to be Streets of Rage 4, right? I'm just going towards the end just to see if anyone screams Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I don't, it's really difficult to describe, but it's got that kind of like 90s Euro-ish. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 it feels Streets of Rage to me. That, Jane, is from Streets of Rage 4. Oh, no! Oh, no, I could have said... When I said stage cleared, mm. I was thinking of a Streets of Rage. Yeah, I thought you were getting cleared. on the. I thought you were getting on the right path there. Getting on the right track, but I took the off ramp off the right track into the hinterlands, yep. into the wasteland of it. wrong answers. That was pretty good. Couldn't, I couldn't accurately Actually, articulate it, but I knew it was Streets of Rage. Basically, I say that was pretty good. It wasn't. You got three out of six. So, <laughs> what? Oh, come on. That's this round's fall, guys, in that it's the answer I definitely should have got and could have got and did not get. Well, there's the chance to make up plenty of points now, Jane, because we're moving into the final round, the lightning round. Finally this year, we have the lightning round. Quick questions looking for quick answers provided by you quickly. So... Here we go! Cyberpunk 2077 finally released this year after several delays. In fact, the game had three previous release dates before settling on its final release date of December the 10th. Can you give me oh, any of those three previous I dates? I know where you're going with this. If you can give me <laughs> any of those three previous dates, Jane, I will give you a point for each one. Okay, right. Mm, February the 11th-ish? <laughs> Sometime in February. What day did it come out on? Yeah, December the 10th. But December the 10th. So we know it's not December the 10th. Yeah, and there are only the 365 days <laughs> in a year. So you've, I mean, already you're down to one in 364. <laughs> so I've already... So you've already lowered those you, odds. That's I've great. already reduced the... Do you say quickfire? Mm -hmm. And then November the 26th or something? Okay. It wouldn't have come out on April the 1st, because that's April Fool's Day, or 4th of July because I would have yep. remembered that. Or any of the... So there's, you can take two more days off of the 365. Any of the 21 days in December after the day it came out. Oh, that's true. It can't come out <laughs> after, after it's, it's come, come out. out. Exactly. <laughs> so really narrowing um, this down. It's the quick fire round, Jane. You're making a mockery <laughs> of the quick fire round. January the The lightning 21st. round, even. Sorry, no. Uh, the answers were 16th of April 2020, 17th of September 2020, and 19th of November 2020. Uh. Those are the three previous Cyberpunk release dates. So no... Fair enough score there. Question number two in the lightning round. 2020 also saw the release of Minecraft in the form it was always meant to be enjoyed, as a breakfast cereal. The cereal in question is made by Kellogg's and is cinnamon flavoured with marshmallows, but what's it mm -hmm. called? Uh, breakfast blocks. Minecraft breakfast blocks? Yeah. Is what you're going for? Like Minecrunch? Minecrunch. Minecrunch. You're, you're not far off, it's Creeper Crunch is the what? correct answer. Oh, that's rubbish. Uh, well. Breakfast blocks. It <laughs> shouldn't be called breakfast blocks. All right. That is fair, but you can't have a point. Minecraft Mine Crunch is way better Minecraft than Creeper, Creeper Crunch, Crunch, Crunch is the you name. You fools, you idiots. <laughs> you had a gift and you squandered it. Question three. After a protracted development, the Uncharted movie seems to be finally moving in the right direction. And this year, we got to see actual pictures of star Tom Holland in his Nathan Drake get up. But yes. can you tell me how many directors this troubled production has had? It's not a troubled production. It's just It's one had of a number those... of different directors attached to it. No. Yeah, but at that stage when it's barely a production, at that stage when they're just like shopping a script around Hollywood going, do you want to direct this? And someone goes, I guess maybe, just leave the script over there, I'll get to it. And they're like, so-and-so is attached to direct mm. this film. So and how many like, people no. have done that? Oh, loads, everyone, literally everyone. Everyone in I was, I was pretty <laughs> You direct. were briefly approached. leave approach. the script over there, I'll get around yeah. to it. Four. Four. I don't know, six. Ooh. So close, Jane. It's seven. Well, then give, give me a point if it's I, close. No, I'm not going to give you a point because it's wrong, but it's also close. Seven? Yep. There have been seven directors attached to the Uncharted. That's outrageous. They should just yep. can it. I mean, like, if, it, if after seven directors, it's still not happening. I think they've settled on one now. It's fine. All right. Question four. Pac-Man yes. had a big anniversary this year. What was it? It's been 20 years dry for a whole Pac-Man. 15 years married to Ms. Pac-Man. <laughs> Is that your answer? 30. 30 years. 30 years? 30 years of Pac-Man. Four, it must be 40. Correct. Was it 1980? Pac-Man's yeah, 40th yeah. anniversary was this year. Well done. That's a point. If I'd done a little bit of mental arithmetic then, I would have realised that we're in the year, help yeah. us all, 2020. Pac-Man didn't come 20? out in 1990. 
Uh, question five. What was the dollar value of Microsoft's acquisition of ZeniMax and its subsidiaries Bethesda, Arcane, id Software, Machine Games, and Tango Gameworks? That's a trick question because it was such a... Uh such a worthless property that it was one of those nominal fees where they gave them a dollar single dollar and they said now you own Zenimax okay so um, yeah if you name your dollar amount I, I will accept to the nearest it's half $1. billion I just said one dollar I'll accept oh. to the nearest half billion so <laughs> eight and a half billion I don't know eight and a half billion four point seven seven one seven four point seven seven one seven yes <laughs> okay I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The answer is $7.5 billion. Oh, no, that's what I meant. I meant 7.4. 7. 7. 7. Right, sure, sure, sure. 7. Well, I can only take your first answer, I'm afraid. So, all right, question six. You got Mor me there. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 11 added three action movie characters as DLC. Name them. I guess Terminator is sort of an action movie, if you think about Terminator it. Terminator is one point. Uh, Rambo and uh, Robocop and the Terminator? Uh, Robocop. All right, I don't know. All right, lightning round. I don't know. Rambo was just oh. added recently to Mortal Kombat 11. So question number seven, what was the highest grossing video game movie this year? No one's been to the ruddy cinema this year. How can a film have been released? How is that even possible? I probably would have gone and see it. This is like Detective Pikachu all over bloody over again because I would have gone and see, see it. I would have gone and see it. I would have gone and seen it because it's a video game movie. Um, and I'm simple like that. It's not... Oh, is it? Was there another Jumanji? Was there another Jumanji? The only movie I'm sure that came out this year was The Princess Switch 2, so... Is that based on a video game? There, was it Detective Pikachu 2 Electric Boogaloo? <laughs> Electric, Electric Mouse Boogaloo. Electric Pikachu. Yeah. Um, Electric, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Detective Pikachu 2 Electric Pikachu. It, it, was, it was not. Sonic the Hedgehog. No? Was that this year? February. Yeah, it was Valentine's Day, wasn't it? Sonic the Hedgehog. Correct. Hey! Well done. That's the point. Ugh, I can't with that guy. Oh, that wasn't this year. That was 2014. I'm afraid to tell you it was this year. Oh. Okay, and your final question in this quiz of, of the year. And the one... I can't believe that came out this year. ...worth the most points. What kind of sick, twisted time warp are we living in? Ghost Hunting Simulator Phasmophobia was the big hit at the end of the year, with the game having 12 different kinds of ghosts for players to try and track down. How many right. can you name in 30 seconds? You get a point for each, and your time starts now. Okay. Phantom. Shade. Uh, Yuri. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably a Juon. Probably a Ring Girl. Probably a Marshmallow Man. Uh, Wraith, Jin, Phantom, Shade, Demon, um, a gin and a mare. Did I say mare? Mm, you got mare. mare. That's good. And a banshee. Poltergeist. Uh, God, twelve, really. Mm -hmm. um, I said wraith. Did I say wraith? You did I not say you wraith. wraith. You got wraith. So you got that's wraith. Good. Poltergeist is one. Poltergeist is one. Gin. I said gin, right? You did say gin. And the time's up. Oh, okay. I don't know. Just. Re regular ghost? <laughs> <laughs> regular ghost. <laughs> Normal vanilla ghost. Normal ghost. Uh, um, no, that's it. That's 30 seconds. All right, you got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, Jane, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very good. Oh, hey, that's not bad. That's pretty good out pretty of 12. Good. That's why I can't remember anything about 2020. It's all been dedicated to ghosts. The ones ghost you were missing kinds. were... Um, ghost identification. Oni. <laughs> Oni. Uh, demon. Oh, yeah, because it's not really a ghost if you think about it. A demon. Yeah, Revenant and okay. Spirit. Those are the... Oh, Spirit! Obvious. So okay, you got eight cool. there. So let me just yeah. tabulate. Yeah, my brain is just full of ghost nomenclature. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't have a good feeling about this, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, let's top this up. I feel up, like I've just so... dropped too many points in every single round. And Jane, I can tell you... Yes. That you scored 25 points overall. Uh huh. Uh huh. Out of which a is, I don't know, but it's good. <laughs> okay, fine. It's good, but I'm afraid it's not quite enough to beat oh. Mike's 26 points. Well, Mike, it turns out that you are, in fact, the winner. You did just yes. enough to crawl it was never over in the doubt, finish line. I mean, it was. During that bit where I de extremely doubted myself. Mm, but yes, indeed. Wonderful. What a treat for 2020. You lost oh, by no, a single so point. Close. 
Well, what that tells me is that Mike also remembers basically nothing about this terrible year. He remembers less <laughs> ghosts in Phasmophobia than you, certainly. <laughs> so. I think I only, the only thing I really excelled at there yeah. was naming ghosts in Phasmophobia, which is so stupid. All right, well, let's go to <laughs> Mike so for his his victory speech. Anything, okay. f- anything for people to take into 2021, Jane? Um, yeah, if you need a ghost... If you need a ghost identifier, then call me. If you need a ghost buster, don't call me because I don't know what to do with them. I can just tell you which one is which. Okay, over to Mike. And let's now just accelerate towards 2021 and have a wonderful year all because it's been... It's been a real one, 2020, hasn't it? So uh, let's hope for better things in 2021. To the future! Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next year.